On Wednesday, President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris were officially sworn into office. Following his inauguration, President Joe Biden signed 17 executive policies, including a plan to rejoin the Paris Climate Agreement, a federal mass mandate across the U.S., halted construction of the Keystone XL pipeline and border wall, and a lift on the travel ban. Donald Trump's plan to withdraw from the World Health Organization was overturned by Biden, who is now putting the federal government in charge of distributing tests and vaccines for COVID-19. According to reports on Monday, there have been over 400,000 COVID-19 deaths in the U.S. since the start of the pandemic, surpassing the 300,000 deaths recorded just on December 14, 2020. Hello, everyone. Since this is the last cold open of the semester, we thought we'd do something a little different this week. We all know Jeremy. He loves America. He loves the Lord of the Rings. And he's a big, tall, friendly giant that's small in stature. We all hope to grow up like Jeremy. So this week, we wanted to show him a little appreciation. So we're making the segment Jeremy would love. Without further ado, here is the perfect Jeremy segment. This week, we're going to talk a little bit about QAnon. You might be wondering what the heck I'm talking about. Well, come, let me show you. QAnon supporters believe that Democrats and Hollywood actors are part of a cabal that runs a global sex trafficking ring. They also believe that this cabal is waging a war through the deep state on President Donald Trump. To learn more about this subject, we stood up six feet apart with an expert on QAnon. So what do you guys think about QAnon? Well, I think it's a, a very minority group, thank goodness. Yeah, I mean, it's more than disinformation. It's, it's just, it's disastrous as we saw in the riots. I mean, it's, all these groups are getting inspiration from our past president. And now for the funny interview. I'm here with an avid QAnon supporter. What, what does QAnon believe? Oh, oh, you know, we believe in the truth, uh, like um, Hillary Rodham Clinton is pizza, uh, made of pizza, and uh, we think Donald Trump is uh, Jesus Christ, number two. Would you like to say anything else about QAnon? Um, QAnon stands for Quackers Anonymous. And, uh... Oh, oh, oh sorry guys. Oh, just getting a call. It's okay, it's okay. Oh, it's Jeremy. Oh, that's fun. Hi, Jeremy. Yeah, no, we're shooting right now. Yeah, no, it's really funny. Yeah, I think you're gonna like it a lot. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a southern stupid guy. Um, and I'm queuing on, and it's really... Yeah? You think they make some, some good points? Huh. Yeah, you think there's good guys on both sides? Oh, they get, they got too much heat from the media, and from the liberal media? Huh. Okay, yeah, Jeremy, yeah, we'll, we'll tone it down a little bit. We'll, we'll, we'll try to be nicer. Okay. Yeah, I love you. Love you too. Um. Bye, Jeremy. We hope you like our segment. Love you. Thanks, Jeremy. Thank you, Jeremy. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Hi. I would like to apologize for any insinuations that were made in our previous segment. Um, there was a, we said a lot of different stuff, and some of that stuff wasn't good stuff to say. Um, first of all, um, Dr. Jeremy Whalen, he he does not think there are good people on both sides. Um, and he also, uh, does, he's not part of QAnon. That's, that's insane. That, what? That's so crazy. He's not part of QAnon. How can you think that? It, and he's also, he doesn't think Hillary Clinton's made out of pizza. Um, okay. And, and he also wants me, 
No. He also is a good guy and a great teacher. Yeah, he, he doesn't, he's not part of QAnon. Okay, so just, you can stop talking about it. Because he's not part of QAnon. Thank you. While the country still struggles with the uncontrolled spread of the coronavirus, Northampton Public Schools enter the first phase of in-person learning school since March. At the November school committee meeting, committee members voted six to four to use a hybrid plan where students would have two full days of in-person learning each week. Phase one of the hybrid learning plan begins with the district's elementary schools, then moving to the middle and high schools in the coming month. We spoke with an elementary school's teacher as well as a parent of an elementary schooler to get their perspective on the hybrid model. I'm Beth Brady and I'm the math interventionist at the R.K. Finn Ryan Road School. I teach um, grades first through third grade in math. I'm a math interventionist and um, a lot of the other math interventionists in the district and other the reading interventionists are working remotely, but I chose to go in to do in-person services for the students who are coming in. So since I don't serve as kindergarten, I um, started with first grade when they started back. And um, so my role, I didn't have to, you know, prepare my whole entire classroom for the social distancing and stuff because I only have one or two students in my classroom at a time. So, uh, but I was able to, and, and actually all the, the whole team at the school has been working really hard to make the day go really smoothly. So um, I think the kids are experiencing a, a really good um, transition into hybrid. Since Fiona, her older sisters are remote as well, you know, kind of, it was, we thought of it like, whatever we're going to do, everyone's going to do the same thing. Um, and we asked Fiona and Penelope first, hands down, want to be remote. Um, and we just thought, well, everyone's in a way kind of, you know, we're all in close proximity to each other. Um, it does sort of foster on school days. There is a feeling of like school's going on, mom's doing work, we're doing school. It has like a quiet kind of feel to it. Everyone can work. No one's like rushing in and out. One kid going to school, one kid staying home. We wanted everything to be the same. So it was like a family decision. They've all kind of organically um, pulled this together. And I think a lot of it is, is you know, Libby watching her older sisters do it. Um, I mean, they've been like the best role models. With the rise of COVID-19 cases looming over the initial start of hybrid, we set out to find how stakeholders in the school community are reacting to the return to in-person learning. We spoke with Superintendent John Provost to get more information about the measures being taken to ensure our safety. Well, the most significant change to our plans is the planned pause that some of our students are experiencing right now. As we looked at the incidence of COVID-19 in the community and the upcoming holidays, and also looked at the fact that it appears that there was widespread disregard of the message that I gave around Thanksgiving of people not getting together. Our policies have been updated. There's a brand new policy involving masking. Um, so I'm at work today, so I'm wearing my mask. And when students return, they'll be wearing masks as well. So between the combination of masking, filtration, and then HEPA filters, along with the fact that we're having all of our faculty and staff, as well as students conduct a self-screening in the morning, um, we're able to provide layers of protection for health and safety. We also did asymptomatic testing for all of our in-person staff last week. We administered more than 200 tests and all of the tests came back negative. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to stay safe and have a good weekend.
welcome to Hampta. We know it's been a tough semester, and we want to thank you for sticking with us throughout our rookie season. We know it's been a rough year, and I don't know what else to say. Y'all ready for this? For this special episode, we wanted to recap our year and show all the behind scenes specials that we have for you guys. Thanks for watching. And welcome. Oh, f fight, 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 fight. <laughs> oh, figured it out. We're in business. Talking to Camille Richards, co cap one of the co captains for North Hip. Richard or Richards? Can't stop me. Oh, she's looking at me. <laughs> New rule. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm with Kai Gregory from the NHL. Anthony! Oh, okay. oh, there it is. oh, I got him. Go. Oh, I got down. him. Be a leader, Dom. Come on. Oh, damn. Man went up. This week on Hamped Up, we explore the new. This week on Hamped Up, we explore the new world of fall sports and all of the rule changes and difficulties for our athletes as they take on COVID sports. Oh, she don't want to f*** Zia. Oh. Put on the game with Bia. Oh. Look at these poor girls, they're just baking in the sun, standing there. Welcome to Hamped Up. We're here with Dominic Batterini during the North Hampton. Oh. Why? Like, are right, you guys gonna miss me? Come on, Pip, you're not one of them. Run, Pip. Bye, Pip. He's pissed, you want to. Alright. During the summer months, a lot of players took. Hi, I'm Anthony. We're rolling out to Hampton Up. The most human trait is to want to know why. In 2020, we had a global pandemic. The World Health Organization has just declared that this is a pandemic. Forest fires devastated many parts of California. The Dodgers and Lakers won national championships. Los Angeles Lakers. We began remote learning. 100 million children. Zoom after Zoom can be exhausting. TikTok rampaged our screen time. How many days? in March. Dr. Fauci be really became a nightly occurrence on TV. From what we've been through. Amidst tragedy, we faced a rise in unemployment. Million unemployment claims filed in the span of just four months. Social justice causes came to the forefront. Finally, a new president was elected. Not be the last. 2020 was a year of struggle and perseverance. We learned from home, engaged with our friends and family through spotty Wi-Fi and Zoom, and helped each other in times of need. As a part of the transcript team and the NHS community, we understand that the need to stay engaged and tell each other's stories is only amplified at times of struggle. From hamped up, going mic'd up at a track meet, to learning new hobbies in quarantine, and adjusting to the world of COVID-19, this is 2020 as seen by the transcript. I'm Alexa. And I'm Fiona. Welcome, Welcome to the transcript. The final episode of Nacho Average Interview. This week, I'm joined by... Max Logan. Ammunition in it. Oh! <laughs> I'm, I'm just waiting for Nationals. What brings you here to the rally tonight? Uh, Bernie Sanders. Um, I think uh, music has always been a great part of, uh, of rallies. Uh, we're all kind of quarantined in our houses, so I figured why not try and deliver my five most bingeable shows. I've been doing um, buttons in the wrong hole, so you've got this sort of mismatched. Uh, making a coffee table. For this quarantine, I created an album called In the Clouds. I made two videos for the NHS film competition. Hi, I'm Gus. Welcome to Make It Yourself. And we're gonna cut it up. Uh, you can use, you know, like a handsaw, like this one. This week, we're making Not Your Average Nachos. For this recipe, you'll need tortilla chips, black beans, and shredded cheese. That, um, make, that go into your college experience that I didn't think about. Several casualties have been reported thus far, and it's truly a disaster uh, never seen before. Let us in the garden in Child's Park for the transcripts. 
A magician spitting hazardous back from the dead Lazarus position switching stack and severed heads like I'm a masochist. Are you tired of these fraudulent elections? Two baby boomers shriveled up old men. Baby busters, I call them. Baby busters! What's at stake um, in this year's election? I will say that uh, at my age, this is the highest stakes election in my lifetime. Recently, I've been more passionate about producing. My name is Ben Harder. I drive a BMW 2008 328i Sport Package, and I'm a senior. It's kind of fun being able to share what I do with the people around me. He ran away, he got into his a golf cart um, with a big, like, spo sort of spoiler. Thanks for watching this week's episode. Don't forget, this Friday, the class of 2023 is hosting a Zoom Jeopardy night. Sign up by clicking the link in our class's Instagram bio. Or in the email that Mr. Gordon sent to all classes. Sign-ups close at 4 o'clock. Mm -hmm.